All right, you guys know the drill. We're gonna get this thing out. You guys can see this thing didn't move at all. So we got it, you know, pretty decently clean. There's no like oil residue on shit, so it kind of helps. You know, it's not perfect. I couldn't see very well, but we did get it cleaned off for the most part. So we'll be able to throw on the adapter plate and whatnot. I'm gonna sand that down and shit, get all that shit off of there. But we'll be able to sand, uh, get all that shit on, get this out of the truck. And then once we finish our plates up today, I got the two holes drilled. I'm gonna go take it over to the press and we'll get the motor mounts on, backing plate on, and then she is good to go in the truck. I still need to figure, hopefully that's soaked enough. Still need to get that guy off there. So, cause we we'll use the factory lines, wherever those are. Yeah, so this should go in the back of this so I might just I, actually I'm just gonna cut that off because we're not gonna use that line anyway well I did a whole time lapse of getting the engine out moving up the driveway and whatnot and the second I walked away the camera fell over so we don't have that but the bright side we might be able to get the engine in today but we will not be able to get it running today just because we don't have that fitting right there that's what sucks so I am going to uh, get the oil drain done. We're gonna, we have until about one o'clock today. So from about nine to one, we're working on this thing. So about four hours today. We'll see what we can get done. I'm gonna work on getting the backing plate on, cleaning all this mess up. And it shouldn't be all that bad. Once that stuff's on, then we can physically put it in the truck. So like I, like I was saying yesterday about these, um, there's a million different ways you can do these plates. I want them perfect, so that's how it's gonna be. I'm gonna go get the drill press over here, and rather than sitting there with a drill bit, I'm just gonna use the drill press. So that will work out. So this is all what comes off of it. I scraped everything off with a razor blade, got it a lot cleaner than it was. So there you go. Now we can throw this thing back on. I also cleaned that up as well. You can see there was like a little bit of surface rust coming up. It's just what happens to bare iron. So throw this on make sure the dowels line up we have the dowels sitting in there and then no dowels in here it's also something you're going to want to pay attention to you can see there's one dowel here but no dowel here when you go to put the transmission back in we need to make sure great this transmission has only one dowel in it so that means that the original motor has both dowels from that transmission. That would have been, uh, that's great as well. So we're not gonna be able to bolt those up. All right, so I don't have one of them fancy dancy stand things. So what I have is the engine crane, a jack, and a jack stand. This is why I put the adapter plate on before I did the oil pan, because normally I would have wanted to keep this off. But the reason I did it this way is so that I had some sort of support back here. So now I can take the oil pan off and clean everything up. We got the new gasket here slap everything back up on so it turns out there was oil in it <laughs> there was a lot of oil in it I guess that's going in my fuel tank it's a five gallon bucket so it looks like it's gonna fill about two and a half three gallons of it so that's good that's a good sign so a lot of this stuff you won't really have to deal with but the previous owner decided to pull out the little tabs back there pull this out of place took the bolts out took all that out so like it's little things like this that I got to go through and fix and make sure is right like you can also see all of this right here so i guess when the previous owner was putting all this shit in like this is how this this was sitting on the motor when i got it so i got to pull out every one of these little tabs push them all back in and then pop all that back into the firewall so you can see the nice healthy dent that was left in this thing yeah this uh it's one of those projects you know just got to go through everything but he left the grid heater hooked up, so I gotta unhook the wiring for the grid heater because this is gonna go to the new grid heater. Um, I gotta clean all that up. I got new gaskets, an AC compressor. Um, no PCM, so we're actually not going to be able to finish this product project 100% until we get that. And here is the factory fuel pump. So I'm gonna end up cutting that and trying to uh, other side, splice it into the actual lift pump. So we're just waiting on the RTV to dry on the oil pans 
so that the gasket doesn't tweak when we go to throw it up in. And then we'll throw the oil pan on, throw the clutch on, get the drain, and then she is ready to go physically in and cut this, obviously, I'm gonna do that now. But I need to figure out where to get one of these. I don't know why the previous owner removed that. That kind of sucks, but let's see our little ghetto contraption here. So the jack, the this guy here, lift it back up again. There we go. And yeah, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does work. You'll see, here's the fuel pump. So we'll try to connect that to that. I just need to wait to cut it until we know that we have the right length. So that should reach there, no problem. All right, oil pan back on. Time to start messing with the clutch. So you can see what's all in there. Your bolts, everything. Made sure to get the flywheel and all that because last time, what ended up happening when I did mine was I didn't get that stuff. And it turned out when I bought the extra flywheel, I bought the wrong one but they said it fit and it didn't. So, put the transmission, set that there so I don't lose it. Pilot, set that there. So I can come back in the video and be like, where's that? Congratulations on the purchase of your new clutch product. Installation guide. Men don't read instructions. As if I haven't put a clutch in before. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Burn that guy. Burn that. And then we got the heavy sucker. This guy. 10.15 now, so we've got a few more hours. Head out and go buy my new truck. And then hopefully, go pick up the new trailer next week hopefully we'll see if we actually get it that would be awesome new knowledge has been achieved this is the adapter plate for the 12 valve to an NV4500 manual whatever it'll fit your G56 or your NV5600 now the problem if you use the 12 valve one see how you can use every one of the bolts you cannot use the starter without a spacer you need a spacer to push that starter back on mine there's a little bit of a spacing about, yeah, about a half inch or so. So, if you use the common rail adapter plate, you'll be able to use six. One of these uh, will be closer to down here, and then one of these will be like, yeah, you can't use, I believe, this hole and this hole on the common rail one. But you'll have to use six of the bolts and the common rail one, and then the starter spacing will be correct. So, yet another thing, that I need to mark on the list. If you use the common rail one, you can only use six bolts, but the starter will work. If you use the 12 valve one, all eight bolts will work, but you need a starter spacer. So I will let him know that we need to get a starter spacer. It's not gonna stop me from getting it in today, but it is going to stop me from putting a starter in it for one. That's a big deal. All right, we got our pilot bearing in there. Plop that guy in there. Made sure to brake clean the disc or the, you guys know what I mean, the surface of that and everything, wipe it down with a rag, get all that shit off of there. I did see on the kit, if you guys look, it does say no bolts. See, the bolts are there, but there's no check mark next to them. So, in conclusion, I do want to go over this with you guys. A swap like this, if you start it on a Monday, you can absolutely be done with it on a Friday, pending you have everything you need. So this is where the checklist that I'm making is gonna come in handy. Five good eight hour days and you'll have a running driving truck. Like there was no reason for the guy to take out the coolant reservoir, to take out anything that was over here, the washer bottle, to take this off, to take the batteries out, to take all this out. There was no need to have the transmission out. All of this stuff is just extra work that it is costing time, absolutely. So when I first took on this project, I did think I was going to get it done by Friday. Um, I had initially told him after seeing all the wiring and the mess that the previous owner created that it will definitely be next week, not this week. That's one thing to take into consideration. We also got to go get a key made for it. 
and get the steering wheel back to where it was so that I can put the steering shaft back on. You guys can see it's just it's just dangling here so that we could steer it. That's one of those things. All in all, when I first did my 12 valve swap, if you're gonna take a brand new motor and throw it in here, you'll have it done in a weekend, no problem. That's basically what I did was I took a used engine and just slapped it in. I didn't change any gaskets. I didn't do shit. I just threw it in. And then by that Monday, we, I was down in Mississippi dropping a load. So that's just one of those things to uh, keep into consideration. Um, it took me three days engine in and down to Mississippi from Pennsylvania. So, and that was, that was as half-assed as I could really do it. Now that we're doing it correctly, you can see how much more time it does take. But if you do have all the parts, like I said, you'll get it done in a week, not a problem, pending you know these engines. If you know 12 valves very well, you'll have it no problem. Now, if you want to go get a brand new engine or whatever, you can do the swap. The swap is also, I will tell you guys, this swap is not for everybody. If you can't see why people are doing this swap, the swap is not for you. And that's fair, because it's really not for everybody. The common rails, they're really good engines. The 5.9 with the CP3s, great engines. The problem is the maintenance and how much, how picky they are when it comes to pretty much anything. You get a little bit of water and fuel and you need injectors and injectors, it costs more for new injectors than it does to just go and grab a used engine and throw it in. Um, if you're doing it yourself. If you're gonna pay somebody to do it, yeah. The bill, I think all said and done, this is probably gonna run around 6,000, but I will give you guys the final numbers of what this costs, and you can see the routes that we go. You can absolutely throw a lot more money at it, or you can even be cheaper than that. It all depends on what you wanna do. If you have a, a engine laying around that needs nothing, sure, what's, you know, 15, 20 hours to throw an engine in, not a big deal. But if you need like all of this, like we had to do the, I had to pull the exhaust manifold off. I had to pull this engine back out for the guy. I got to make the motor mounts. I got to do all the front gaskets, the front main, the rear main, uh, valve lash. We got, we had to tighten up the head bolts, uh, new fuel pump, you know, oil pan gasket and just all this shit. And then I had to go out and also source every one of these from scratch and figure out what all fittings. It's definitely a timely process, and that's why I figure it out for you guys. So you guys don't have to do that timely process. You can get on my little checklist and go, hey, there's that part he said I needed. Click order, be at the house in a couple days. Simple as that, so you can prepare. I'm gonna put links for everything possible that I've actually bought for this, and if you find something that works better, let me know, and I will try it, and if it works, great, we'll try it out. So. I liked some of this stuff so much, I went and actually ordered extras. Like I ordered one of these um, and a couple of fittings and shit for mine. Like this guy here, I don't have this on mine. I forget what I used on mine. I think I actually drilled and tapped this, but you guys get the point. Uh, we also need, I need to uh, get this thread here and I just have this kind of like lightly sitting in here. I need to tap this fitting as well. That's why there's no Teflon on that. But you guys get the point. And then this fitting back here, yeah, we got a little stubby on that one. So this is gonna go to the heater core line. And then this also is returned from the heater core line. We'll finish up this clutch install. Need a spacer plate for the starter. Definitely make sure that you grease up the splines on that bad boy down there. Place the throwout bearing, replace the pilot bearing. You're already here, you might as well do it. Uh, we'll get the clutch disc back on. It doesn't come with the bolts, so I need to go through here. These are a three eighths, I gotta, Get all these bolts back out and then put them in this guy here. All right, so you guys see, obviously working on the 12 valve checklist, okay? Starter spacer if using the 12 valve adapter plate for an NV5600. You guys can see I wrote it down right there. Now, I come over here on Amazon, 44 ratings, four and a half stars. There is cheaper options, five stars, but there's only 10 ratings and there's only 22 ratings and there's only 16 ratings. I found one with 44 ratings. But it's a half inch starter, so you can use the, uh, where is it, the six, NV5600 six speed flywheel. So this is the problem. This starter is from a, a common rail engine, which they're pretty much all the same, I believe. And on mine, I'm gonna see if I can go out there and show you guys, but on mine, the adapter plate has a five, like a half inch spacing. So I'm gonna go try and see if I can't show you on mine. Yep, there you go. Look at that, so there's a little spacer. And that's what you need to purchase. Also, I'm missing a bolt. And once you tighten all the bolts, you wanna make sure that this guy slides in and out fairly easy, okay? That's what you want. You want that guy centered in there. 
Now you're gonna throw a lot of grease on the end of that guy before you throw it in. But in this case, we're gonna throw the engine in first because it is easier to line up the engine because we gotta take the motor mounts off. So it's actually easier to put the engine in, throw the motor mounts on, line it all up, and then we can line the transmission up when we're throwing it in. But before we do any of that, I gotta get all of these little clips off and we're gonna have to get rid of all of that insulation down there because I'm not gonna be the guy to hang that all back up. All right, steering shaft is reconnected. You guys can see right there. That was a pain because I had to sit here with this bar and this is the position that it was in. There's only one way you can put the steering wheel in, but I knew it was turned. He said you gotta notch the inside of these about a quarter inch on each side, all four corners. I got all this taken off. That's pulled, but we'll get the rest of it at another date. Um, I got this all back up. I sprayed out all of this with compressed air. Now all we pretty much need to do once, I'm gonna get the oil drain, well, yeah, I just need the oil drain and I guess we'll grab, well, yeah, grab all the bolts. Cause when we go to put the plates on, we aren't going to, you're also gonna see, we're gonna put a oil feed there. That's for the oil pressure sensor. So we do have the oil pressure sensor. Let me see. I'll set all the bolts up here. Right here is the oil pressure sensor. And then we also have a crank sensor, which I'll set up there once I find it again. But we have those two, and those are the last two sensors. And I'm gonna pull this guy out as well because I need to keep reminding myself that I need to tap that, which means I need to get a tap. So there is a couple of pieces that we do ha do need, but it is what it is. I'm gonna get this motor mount off as well. Take all four bolts out, and one, I'm gonna set the motor in there, clean that up, and then I will start finishing up the motor mount plates. I just at least, I've been saying I wanna get the motor in for the last two days. I wanna at least get the motor setting in place. Like that's gonna mean the most. So, and get this guy off here. Remember the first time I went to do this swap? Kind of an embarrassing story. I had my HE341 sitting in place. It's the two years ago when I first did the swap, I had put the motor mount upside down and I'm like, man, this thing isn't working. And I was like clearing the shit out of this, like notching the fuck out of it. Like, yeah, I did a really good job. And then I go and I realize I'm like, this motherfucker's upside down. <laughs> that was two years ago I did that. Um, I thought it was just because of the turbo that I was using. <laughs> Turns out I'm just sometimes an idiot. <laughs> So I'm gonna get this guy taken off here as well because I need to make a gasket for that and then get a piece. So I'm gonna take a measurement real quick and pull all that off and then slap the motor in. Gonna have to update my little list, but from like up here to like back here a little bit, it's about an eight inch hose and I think this is three quarter. So it's not a small pipe by any means. So three quarter is what we'll grab. Have to go out and get that at some point. So I got this as cleaned up as I pretty much could. Um, the new gaskets on but we're not gonna hook that up right away i don't know why the guy took the coolant bottle out like it's all here i have everything but i don't know why they did that i'm gonna have to pull these guys off as well because i will have to go and buy some you know hose about this all right so you have to knock out a, a good quarter inch this is what it looks like Pretty much an angle grinder at that point. It's only gonna rest where it's, you know, on that nub, but that's pretty much what it looks like when you notch them out about a quarter inch. Um, you have to do that, no matter what. A lot of guys on the forums are taking this motor mount piece here, this support, and cutting it off and moving it up here and then notching their support, which if you ever wanna put a common rail back in, doesn't work. This way, you can still use the common rail. Once you tighten your shit down, there's still that nice little groove in there. That's where it's gonna sit when you put a common rail back in. With a 12 out, it's gonna sit in this one. So people on the forums are just nuts putting them in here and cutting their cross members up and shit. Don't do that. Make it so that you can put it back to factory if you ever wanted to. Otherwise, in this case, it's somebody else's problem because this guy didn't know what he was doing and decided to sell it. So I'm just one person, so what I did was, Took a ratchet strap up here, 
this guy here and used it to pull the transmission out of the way because it was hitting. A bit of rusty crusty, some oil and shit under here, factory muffler. Never actually seen one of those in person. But now I can get the engine all the way back. That way it's out of the way and they'll be able to use the engine hoist to position for the motor mounts. So we'll do one side at a time and we'll go from there. All right, headed to go get the box truck now. Well, I gotta get the trailer first. So we're about 15 minutes away. Go grab the trailer, go grab the box truck, go do the paperwork, notary stuff, and we own a box truck. So hopefully get to work on that this weekend while we wait on some parts for the truck that is in the shop. All right, we're hooked up. We are headed over there now. Just need to get up here and turn around. One of the last hoes we'll be doing with this thing. Trailers for sale. I just posted it last night on Craigslist. Oh, here she is. This is mine now. Just paid for and registered and inspected. So, 10,000 pound GVWR. She asked me if I wanted the downrated. I said no. Look at that. And it's windy today. So, we are parked way over there about the wind noise but two, uh, how many miles 297 oh, I don't have the key in it but yeah 297,000 miles I'm gonna need to clean this thing out get all the labeling stripped off of it if you guys need anything uh, help these guys out if you guys need to serve anywhere or need to donate or any of that just go check them out I'll be dealing with these guys for a while gotta get all this stuff cleaned out Get it vacuumed out. Probably get rid of this board here. All right, let's do a cold start on her. Let's see if she starts. Wow, she runs. This thing's been sitting a while too and she fires right up. So these guys, they need funding for their next truck. She's already put the money down and everything, but they need funding to try and go get another truck. This is all charity work. Sorry about the wind noise, but it's all charity work. So if anybody, you guys know anybody that wants to help, like I said, it's get a hold of them. Um, I'm gonna be cleaning off the side and everything, but I definitely, this is, this is mine now, so obviously I don't need it to say their labels and whatnot, but I still am around every now and again helping them out. Once we get the finances back up, I'll be here a lot more. But like I said, they need funding, and this is mine now, so let's see if, uh, Oh man, it's windy out there. Ugh. Let's see if she moves. I can't see. Well, I bought a box truck. It's a good day. Hopefully we're not over height. I'm gonna have to measure that, make sure that we are under the 13.6. So my spot is not put some air in the bags and we are good to go but we wow well she's back there weird but you know whatever well boys here she is we made it back we are definitely under the legal limit sorry about the wind noise but here she is I think I scraped something when I came up because there's a lot of low points down here but this is uh this is my box truck so we'll see what ends up happening to it. I need to get, I want to get all of the lettering like off of it. So that'll be fun at some point, maybe uh, on a day like it's kind of warm. It's not bad right now, but it's been getting cold. So we have a full, let's, let's see. Look at this, ready? Ugh. Look at all of the room for activities we have in here. Like, can't be that tall. I think it's, it might be eight feet. I don't know. I can touch the roof, so I don't know how high I can really reach. I'm like 5'9". But this is it. This is mine now. We're centered in the spot somehow. A little crooked, but centered. So I need to get all of this stuff out. So I'll probably have Liam start doing that. Yes, it's mine. I bought, a, I have a plate for it and everything. It's registered, it's inspected, and it's insured for the next 10 days as per Pennsylvania law. Because that's how it works. 
when you buy a car in Pennsylvania, it is legally on your insurance policy for 10 days before you call in. It's weird how they do it. This is like the 55th vehicle I've ever owned. Now, as for the trailer, guys, somebody come and get this. If you look on Kaufman, Kaufman's website, they show this exact trailer for 13.8 brand new with nothing on it, and you can't even buy it for that now. If you actually call Kaufman for the updated pricing and whatnot, I was just made aware that apparently the two car, the 34 footer, or 36, I can't remember, 36 footer is now going for 13,000. I'm selling my 43 footer with the extensions, with extra ramps, with a winch cable, with spare tires, with all the extras going with it, with including all the straps for 13,000. Somebody come and take this thing because this is a really good trailer. And if nobody comes and gets it, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure somebody will probably complain, oh, it's because I, it doesn't have a battery on it or something like that. And it's like, I do have the factory, I do have the battery for it and everything. So come and get this thing. Like I said, I have, I need it gone. Because if you guys want to see me start doing freight, there we go. We're in, we're in the box truck. We got this box back here. So the thing is, hopefully we're going to be picking up a 40 foot big Tex next week. Tandem dually CDL trailer. Go get our CDL. It's going to be great. Hopefully, as long as the guy holds true and everything works out, I will, I'll be down there. We just need to come up with a down payment. And 350 a week is what we're going for. 15,000 is the asking price. And that's what I'll pay it. I don't care. That's a good price. Pretty decent trailer. Let me know what you guys think are wrong with it. Because all the maintenance is done. You know, maybe, maybe you have to grease the bearings or something. But something as simple as that. It's like all the tires have been replaced. Everything's new. Wiring and whatnot is easy to diagnose. So if there's any ever wiring issues, it's all something that you can do on the side of the road. Super simple. But... Now we're gonna get this thing cleaned out. I wanna get all of this stuff. Get all of this stuff out, throw it all in the bed, and then Liam can grab it on the other end, like all these pens and whatnot. So we'll throw everything inside of here. It also comes with a fire extinguisher, which we need for DOT purposes. Not that this thing's gonna go out, but I would like to have a fire extinguisher in it. It's pretty All right, well I got the, I guess this is the glove box. I got that cleaned out. All the stuff's back there. It's all... Why is the steering wheel locked? Because I didn't put a key in it. I think I'm just going to leave the keys here, honestly. I think they're in the center console, so i got to leave the keys in it. And there's a bunch of stuff down in here. There's a license plate. There's a Bible in here. All right, so we're going to back up to this thing, and uh, I'm going to unhook. We'll back up to it, get this thing cleaned out. The bed is going to go in the back of this thing at some point, but I want to get it all cleaned out and see how clean we can really get it. If anybody wants to get paid to clean all that stuff off, let me know. But, and also if anybody knows anybody that is willing to help sponsor a new truck for them, let me know as well, because they would definitely appreciate it. It's a 100% tax write-off and a 100% charity. So, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I do have the gooseneck coupler, not just the fifth wheel, so. I do plan on taking the fifth wheel coupler with me unless somebody wants it. Let me let him go. So, let's get this thing down and back up to it. Alright, so here's the dilemma. I post this video mainly about the box truck, even though there's 12 valve swap in it. Because, yes, I could separate it and whatnot. I don't have enough content for that. And I need to be... Daily uploading is the goal. The whole point of the channel is me daily uploading because it's my life basically not hot shot not mechanic stuff i am just posting you know posting the series to help people out and we have the checklist in there so i'll probably just end up going through certain sections and picking things out specifically but this video specifically is going to be about this because we didn't do much with the uh the black truck today and we do have a couple more inquiries about doing stuff on that so here's the dilemma we need this sold this needs to get cleaned this needs to get cleaned. That needs to get put in the box truck. I need to go get my other white truck, bring that back here, throw that in this as well. Probably throw the frame in the top. I believe this is probably like nine feet. Oh, I don't know. The whole thing is probably about nine feet. So that would make sense because we're not over height, believe it or not. It looks it looks pretty bad. We're not over height. And you guys can see their slogan, by the way. Serving need-based family since 2001. So awesome lady to deal with. She is she knows a lot of people that do business owner stuff as opposed to employees. 
So definitely a great crowd of uh, people to be around and has definitely, I've learned a lot from her in the little bit of time that we did spend together. And it's been great. So I don't know what we're gonna do with this thing like clean wise, but I know I wanna get labels off the side. That's about it. Um, I don't know if it'll pass inspection again, but I'll probably try to get it through, <laughs> but we'll see. So we'll clean it up, get it used. It's two wheel drive, obviously. That might have a little bit of an oil leak. Um, she definitely took good care of this thing for what it was, but this thing has not had an easy life either. It has always like moved pallets for them and she does scrapping as well. So this has been mile high. We went on quite a few scrap runs and they make money off of that so that they can put that money back into the charity and keep the charity alive because believe it or not, charities actually have to make money to function because if they don't, they can't go and get other equipment like this. And she put money down on it, but they don't really have too many people. All right, well, that's pretty much gonna do it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Trailer is located in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. We're out here. So as long as I can get this out of the spot, we'll set this down. This is a free storage unit that you know, I'm, I'm not going to disclose how much I paid for it. It wasn't free. That's all I can say. And the registration cost on one of these, wow, kind of annoying. I thought this was expensive at 185. This was way more to register. Well, I guess I did have to pay tax on the vehicle as well. So, but it, it was way more. It was obnoxious. That's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember when you're pro, uh, putting these prices into consideration, remember that when you go buy a brand new trailer, it doesn't come with a winch spares it doesn't come with any of this stuff you have to purchase all that separately so good trailer thirteen thousand dollars someone come and get it hope you guys enjoyed feel free to go check out the amazon affiliate links down below go check out my mud flap and coinbase codes in the description and i'll see you in another video